Hey guys, we're heading out the Western Highway, out the west side of Melbourne, out to Wombat State Forest, and uh, there's quite it's quite a large area. Spans from uh, you could draw a line. Look, let's say near Greendale from Greendale out to Dalesford in a few different directions from there. Also towards Gisborne, we're just heading up the Pentland Hills, which up until now our three litre diesel five speed auto held converter lock which it's quite a big hill and it's amazing if your vehicle does that uh, unfortunately as the 1GD owners would know they don't do that anyway what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to get into the forest there and we're going to provide a bit of information for the people that are less experienced or new uh, to full driving, a little bit of information on a few things to think about in preparation, some of the base things you need to take or should take with you, and a lot of the considerations, some of the basic recovery gear, and just to put a bit of thought before you do things. So um, I'll just remind you, if you haven't already, much like our 4B4 Diesel channel, which is very much loved, this channel will also provide some genuine, authentic information to help get you educated so you can learn a little bit more about your 4x4 and we're going to provide some track and trip information here so you could even possibly plan a day trip yourself. It's going to be hard, there's a little different aspects I want to include in this video for information for you. I'll just recap again, we're heading at the Western High, so we just put, you can see the sign, we're passing the Mooney on exit at the moment, we're not taking that exit, that's not our exit for today, we're going to take the Greendale or Pikes Creek exit, that's the next one after Mooney on, and head down into Greendale, we will then get to the start of a track and let the tyres down, so let's get up there. Right, here we are, we've got a unmarked Volkswagen police van in front of us has just gone back, he is on a mission Yeah, we're sitting on the speed limit and he's having a muck around, he's on a mission he is Anyway, uh, just be aware guys, unmarked cars all over the joint, this is our exit I hope you saw the sign, and head down into Greendale, find a nice spot at the start of a track And do some vehicle preparation turning right where it says Pikes Creek Greendale all right guys so this is Greendale not Greenvale, Greendale. And quite often when we organise a trip in Wombat, and we, you know, Wombat State Forest, we refer to it as a Wombat. We'll meet up just here. So you come straight down through the roundabout. So if you see a day trip and we say we're gonna head into Wombat, it's gonna pretty much consist of what's in this video. And the information in this video is things you need to know for whether it's yourself, your own group, or our group, and your trips. Normally we park here. There's a toilet block just there on the left. There's a nice shade gazebo on the left, some barbecues, a playground for the kids, and a footy oval with a cricket pitch in the middle, okay? So we're not gonna stop here this time, or air, normally we'd air down. So as soon as you get here and you're waiting, you can stop and air your tires down. If you don't know what I'm talking about, sit tight, we'll have some more information coming shortly. But what we're gonna do, and this is where we head sometimes after we've aired down, but not always. There's a lot of different, I've been coming here for years and you know what? The, I haven't seen all the tracks yet, you know? So uh, there's a lot of tracks out here. We're gonna head up the hill and we're gonna find another spot to stop and I'll have a bit more information for you. I'll remind you again now, you might like to press subscribe and turn that bell on because there's gonna be some awesome information and you don't wanna miss the next video either. Wombat State Forest, we even had a sign. So we're coming up the hill here, we're about a K or two from uh, from Greendale, up from the roundabout, and there's a left turn right here. See that orange sign on the right? Charcoal track. We're turning left into the start of what's mapped. And on all the maps, you know, a lot of the maps, they've got different names for different tracks, but one consistency is 
this is charcoal track and the track isn't charcoal at the moment we're just going to head down the start a little bit find a nice place to stop and give you the first course of the important information to get you started so that you don't get into trouble and a lot of people I know there's a lot of people that will watch this that already know but you might get something out of it and you might be able to put something in the comments to give me some more ideas and uh, correct me and help me do things better also all right guys for years I've been trialing lots of different uh, sorts of maps right and I want to give you the tip at the moment this one is free as far as I know it's called maps.me I'm always searching for value for money good quality products items maps whatever it might be okay when I say always not always but you know always on the hunt and this maps.me is really good check this out right so you download whatever state you want whatever maps you want it includes a road and off-road it works a lot like Google Maps you can put routes in and that even offline the maps there guys it's already downloaded so if I didn't have internet would be the same anyway right so you can obviously you can get rid of all your that right you can put it on a bigger device device if you like this is just on a phone to give you an idea right so I'm just gonna zoom in and show you the sort of detail because there's a lot of tracks around here and you just keep zooming in well this one might not be showing the name but normally and uh, maybe it's further down the track I don't know but normally it even shows you the track names but check that out guys and the main thing is you need a GPS map why to show you where you are on the map so it pays to have a paper map which we've got uh, which we may if I remember show you the details of that one as well but if you can have some sort of GPS app running that shows you where you are in the forest all right guys here we are i um, just going to go through quickly a few things that if you're coming on one of our trips uh, These are the things we'll go through the first things that come to mind. You know, it's not a pre-planned, right? It's just butter bing, right? Now, you don't have to have a lift kit But there's a good chance You may scrape the underbody rough tracks extra clearance helps. So in my opinion having a lift kit is going to help prevent damage on the vehicle and it's also going to help reduce the risk you're going to get stuck somewhere because if you haven't got a lift and everybody else has when you get into tracks that have got ruts which certainly aren't here this is just the start of the track it's nice and smooth it's trying to rain nice always be prepared for that it's going to rain okay so Look, again, all-terrain tyres. You don't have to have them. If the conditions are dry, you'll get a very long way with normal road tyres, okay? Your highest risk is you're probably more prone to a puncture, but it's not necessarily going to happen. So tyres and lift are not essential, but good ideas. One of the most important things I'd probably recommend is to have a shovel. So we've got the shovel up on the vehicle. A couple of things, it's a portable toilet. Okay, you can go to the toilet anywhere as long as you've got a roll of paper there and you know to dig deep holes um, it's also one of probably not that I need it but it's probably one of my favorite recovery tools because it's cheap reliable you get a bit of exercise and you can just about dig or make a track between a shovel and a chainsaw you can get through this forest okay so you can chainsaw and dig and you know you don't have to cut trees down whatever you know some people like to do that but you know the smaller stuff a bit of pruning and you can make a pathway through it let's say one of these big trees came down in front of you or somewhere down the track that's right and a lot of the time you can turn around but what if it's one of those days where trees are coming down and while you're in there without your chainsaw a tree comes down so maybe you have to go back 10 minutes you might have to go back two hours but what if one of those trees comes down behind you and you're sort of trapped in there you know what I mean so so all depends where you are the timing you know location have you got communications can you call for help so having phones obviously sat phones and things are you know you can have those they'll help but it's all calculated risk guys everything's calculated risk so shovel is one of the main things obviously always bring plenty of water 
Um, for me, compressor's one of the next main things. So the compressor's always in there. That's why I lock it mounted under the bonnet. It's out of the way. It's not taking up any extra space and it's always there. So if I jump in the car and go, hey, I'm going to hit the tracks. I've got my tires. I've got my deflator to let the tires down. I've got my lift kit. Between those two things in a Prado, I know where I can go and it's just about anywhere. Okay, with the help of tire pressure is a big thing and knowing how to use the vehicle correctly, which is we're going to go into a bit more of that in this video. So make sure you've got plenty of water, you got your shovel. If you've got a chainsaw, please carry that for everyone's sake. And of course, that's handy for firewood as well. Um, what else can I think of? A UHF's a good idea, communication. If you're coming on one of our trips, please have a UHF. You don't have to have a per permanent unit and an antenna mounted in or on the vehicle. You can have a five watt handheld. Oricom have a little five watt handheld. You can sometimes get on special for around 150 bucks. It works just as good as a any other five watt. You can connect an external antenna to it. Same thing, the battery last ages, it's really good. That's all we use in our 150 Prado. I've actually got the K on rear you know, antenna mount and we use that sometimes, but you get a good couple of Ks, it's to communicate with the convoy, that's all it is, okay? But please have one, please don't come on a trip with us or a trip on your own without a UHF, okay? So Oricom 5 watt UHF, you know, that'll do the job. You can get whatever else you want if you like, just saying, that's what we've got, that's what we use. All right, what else? You don't need a snorkel, uh, you don't need a bull bar, that's not a requirement. Um, Make sure your vehicle's in good sound mechanical working order, and that's really easy to do with a Toyota, especially a Prado, if it's been looked after. That's why we like, you know, having these vehicles reliable on trips. And then you need to know how to use it. So don't come out on the trip to go, okay, uh, and you don't know how to use your buttons. You need to know your buttons. So let's take a look in this, right? Um, you might need your rubber floor mats. Rubber floor mats are a good idea. Let's have a look at these at the end of the day. We like to keep the vehicle clean. So you might want your blower, you know, your Ryobi Plus One blower back to blow the dust off the back door, particularly in the 150. But um, let's get in the vehicle and have a look at engaging low range again in a further detail and then hit some tracks and talk about when we need to use it. All right, just quickly, a few other things you might need. If you haven't got a chainsaw, maybe even take something like a bow saw. It's very reliable. It's not going to run out of fuel. It'll get you exercise. It'll get through the smaller stuff. You could have a Roby Plus One reciprocating saw. And the important one I wanted to show you right now is, well, you could have a torch as well in case you do get stuck somewhere and end up in the dark. Uh, you might have some tools, a tire repair kit, stuff like that as well. But the important one, air guard, because some big sucker mozzies. And imagine you got stuck somewhere and you're getting eaten alive. So yeah, Aerogard or something similar, tropical strength, you know, it's got the uh, deep, see, the bad stuff, that's the one. And of course, before we get too excited, let's do a quick demo and talk about what you can use to let your tires down and a couple, another safety item you can see in the picture. Right, so tires first. Some people think you've got to have a quick deflator or whatever, and they are good if you use them correctly, but remember you're taking your valves in and out all the time. I don't know whether that's a good thing. It's probably all right. Don't over tighten them. Just seat them in nicely so they're seated. Don't need to go too hard. And you need to make sure when you're unscrewing it that you've pulled the center out so that it doesn't unscrew your valve again. So there is some people have had some complications with those. You've got those like Storm tire deflators. Apparently they can be a little bit inaccurate, you know, and if you want to do different pressures then you know you, you, you you know so they're not bad because you screw them on by the time you walk around you get back to the tire so they're good there's different things or if you want something cheap and you're just getting started el cheapo very accurate pencil tire gauge it's slow but it'll do the job you just use the back of the uh back of the thing there they've got it designed that you just press on it but i say putting it on a bit of an angle works quicker open it see like that's blocking it Open it up a bit like that, and look, it doesn't take that long. So that'll get you going. That's good enough. It's going to take you, well, you know, no, no, more, about five to ten minutes to let your tyres down from your normal running pressure. Most people are on is around the 40 psi, depending on your load and your tyres. You're going to start off by letting your tyres down to around the mid 20s, about 25 for most tracks for comfort and for a little bit of extra traction. And we'll talk about that 
perhaps later in this video or in another video. Um, in the 120, there's a really handy place to mount your fire extinguisher on that step there. It's a pretty useless space. And while we're at it, you can see the emergency pair of thongs. You never know when you need a pair of thongs. That's where they go hidden in there behind the fire extinguisher. Let's let the tires down and we'll get rolling. That's how long it took to let the tire down to 25. I reckon it was about one minute. Not hard to do with one of these. Okay, so there's a number of reasons we let our tires down, okay? A number of reasons. Okay, one, as most people are probably thinking, for extra traction, okay? So, put simply, having a lower tire pressure makes your tire bigger, not just wider, not really wider, it's more about the length. Think about it. As it bags out at the bottom, it gets longer. That footprint, the length of the tread gets longer, therefore increasing the length. So if you let enough air out that it doubles the length of the footprint print of the tread of the tire and you're moving slowly along a track like this, it more than doubles the traction because it's doubled it because of the length, but because the tire is softer on the rough parts, it can absorb those rough sections and rocks better and wrap around them. So the reason I put that last little bit of video, I don't know if you could see it, but when I look in the mirror at the back tire going along these tracks, and this isn't a hard track, this is demonstrating some reasons why we let the tires down. You can see the tire def wall deflecting in a lot. And I don't think you could see it in that video. So I don't know if you should look at your own while you're driving, you need to look where you're going. but. Um, if you, I was able to adjust the mirror, look in the mirror while I'm driving, you know, don't stare it out because you'll run into a tree, but there's a lot of deflection in the sidewall. So my next point is, it's for comfort. So it's not just for, when I say comfort, my comfort, hey, I want some comfort as well, but the vehicle wants some comfort. Do you want to shake your vehicle to pieces and wreck it? from having hard tire pressures and driving hard on tracks and smashing over speed humps and potholes or whatever, it's something to think about, okay? Uh, comfort is, to me, I let my tires down before I need to for traction. I let them down for comfort for me and for the vehicle and for the occupants, okay? Um, same as uh, going into low range. I'm not in low range at the moment. This is a very easy track. We haven't got to the maybe medium, depending on the track condition, I'll rate it medium. Sometimes it's difficult. It's certainly never been extreme. We're about to find out the current condition shortly. So at the moment we're in high range. I've selected low to keep the speed down, which is why I would you normally select low range. It's a lot about speed control, keeping the transmission cool and looking after the rest of the components of the vehicle by keeping the speed of the vehicle down and the control down. You know, you get a bit carried away. I'll give you an example, right? So here we are, we're in high range. I've let it, I've put it in fourth, I'm getting moving, I'm doing 35, 40 Ks, right? You know, we're okay at the moment, it's pretty smooth, right? And you get a bit confident and you're coming down here and this is all right but and then uh, sometimes what happens all of a sudden you get to a washout and you can't stop in time and then you're on the brakes like this and you're loading up that front suspension so when it hits that washout or that pothole bang even harder than before and that's how you wreck your suspension your bushes your control on bushes putting extra load and shocks on your bearings so you're better off keeping your speed slow yeah, who's in a hurry? Aren't you meant to be out relaxing? Yeah, you know, you're on holidays, you're on a trip. Just take it easy, cruise like this at your own pace. If you're in a convoy, 
the slowest vehicle sets the speed of the convoy, okay? So, it's every person's job to not lose the person behind them, okay? Don't lose the person. It's not up to them to keep up with you. So, I, look, I'm not keeping up with the guy in front of me. Am I worried? No, because I know they're going to wait at the next turn. We're just going to follow the main track straight unless otherwise advised on the UHF or when we get there, someone's going to be there to mark the turn. I'm going to pick up the UHF. I'm going to give them a flash. I'll pick up the UHF, I'm going to say, hey, Steve-o, got you, mate, keep moving, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, I hope you get the drift. So that's a bit about tyre pressures. We've gone into 25, there's plenty more room to move. The other little, this is not about tyre, this is not a tyre pressure video. We'll have a tyre pressure video, we've got plenty of other videos, check those out. But the one thing you want to do is subscribe, because as I said, like our 4 Before Diesel channel, which is very popular and much loved um, you don't want to miss out on the important genuine authentic information as you can see i'm not trying to sell you a tire deflator right? i'm not trying to sell you anything i'm going to tell you about products that i believe are good quality we've used we've seen people use it comes back to the trips and the workshop a little bit as well because we get to see a lot of it we're just not one experience or we're not just seeing what someone posted on facebook we see a lot of real world examples and nobody's paying us to tell you anything other than the truth genuine authentic all right so next step of this video is probably going to be about selecting low range and some of the buttons we're in uh, 120 today so this is probably going to be consistent for anyone that's got the 1kz120 even though it's a different engine the v6 obviously the grundes and stuff can be different uh, vx even with some traction control and stuff like that so we're going to give the general information for the gxl uh you know the the mechanical lever they changed in the 150s in around september and on when they came out and it's all push buttons electronics right which is as we said we briefly mentioned we briefly did another video you might want to check it out i think it's called when to engage low range and you know we go over things again and again because it's just a little six minute video and there's more information than six minutes so when you've got some time and you want to get out and do some trips and pick up some tips that's where you watch the longer videos like this and you might not have time to finish it now but there's always another day we're just happy to be out here during the week when it's nice and quiet on the tracks to get a bit of peace and quiet um, we're going to have some fun on a few tracks it's going to be hard to get the footage and have the fun so i'm sorry if i leave you out of that one i'll try and i'll try and name some tracks as i have so far we've come in on charcoal track we're still continuing on charcoal so again if you follow the video you should you know i apologize in advance or i forget i'm gonna i'll say i'm gonna tell you this i'm gonna tell you that and i might forget but this is really good preparation for you on your first trip or second trip or fifth trip or even if you think you've got some experience watching these videos you might go oh yeah never really thought of that actually so but we're going to be taking it really slow and comfortable today we're about to come down uh, there's a little creaky thing here but it's not that exciting a bit of mud maybe we had a whole heap of rain a few days ago uh, when i say a whole heap probably the most we've had overnight in a very long time in one dumping i reckon we had eh, yeah some people in other parts of australia in the world or whoever is gonna think ah that's nothing but to be quite honest we got about 50 60 70 mil hard to know exactly i haven't checked the rain gauge i had a a container out that filled up that i'd estimate was about 70 mil deep will allow a little bit for cheating maybe it was only 50 or 60 mil somewhere around there you know so anyway anything more exciting down this track i will hit you up yep it's going to be a long video we're going to include it all in one please stick around and if you get something out of it please press the like button bada bing all right we've come down we're about to do a little creek crossing i haven't really checked it out yet but we'll check it out and uh it's time to engage low range why is that because any creek river crossing anything that's slightly technical and we're about to go up a hill is always low range for me so we'll just quickly go through that so down here and you can see you have your recovery gear i haven't mentioned that yet at arm's length and you're probably asking where are the shackles well they're heavy they can be dangerous in the front so what you do you put your shackles onto the seat adjusting bar then they can't go anywhere you like that they're down there snatch strap at arm's length ready to go ready for action okay 
Yeah, when you're selecting low range, it's important that you keep your foot on the brake. The vehicle's not moving is ideal and put it in neutral, see? In for nowhere. Sorry about the light. And low range is quite simply bang like that. That's it. You shouldn't need to force it. If you ever need to force it, don't do it. It's a mechanical system. Very rare, but they can have problems, but I'm not sure if it's caused by people forcing or trying to shift them around. Very rare, so don't worry about it, right? Again, back out is simply bang, back and across. As simple as that. Diff lock in high range, locked, unlocked, right, bang. Anyway, so into low range. The other thing we do is we lock the second start button. It's hidden just here behind our micro -room. Second start button goes on. That'll bring a light up on the dash there. That's that one there, second start. And what that means is we're going to put it into drive or fourth. The vehicle is going to do everything starting in second. It will not, not go back to first. And we'll explain more in other videos. And we may have included in that short when to use low range video the types of situation where we're going to use first. But it's not going to be anytime soon. So let's get across this creek and up the hill. All right. So it all depends whether they've great. Sometimes, you know, not much water in here at the moment. Yeah, it's barely, you can barely call it a creek, right? But sometimes around the corner it's quite washed out. And this is where second start works because sometimes you want more momentum and less wheel spin. Low range is just going to get you not enough speed, too much revs. It's going to be a harsh kick into uh, second in low range. So you're better off just starting in second. It's just better for everything. Starting So as soon as you go to low range, that's what the second start button is for in my opinion. Someone else or Toyota might tell you it's for something else. But in my mechanical background and experience using these vehicles and the full understanding, there's no reason why you would want first low range until you got to some really steep, rough, rock hopping type stuff where you've got to go really slow, keep your tires on the ground. You know, you're gonna be down to 15 PSI type stuff to get some traction. Um, not necessarily, I'm giving you some guides, okay? So this one, it's a little bit of a steep one. It's in pretty good condition at the moment. You could go up any way you like, you know. I'm just taking it slow. You're not even gonna spin a wheel. In this vehicle, we've got a standard, well, it's a slightly shimmed up LSD. It worked before. Uh, we put a locker in the rear as well, and it transformed the vehicle just that little bit further than the, the major transformation, which was the front locker. We've got the ARB front locker on this one over five years now, probably coming up on six years. Um, never had a problem with it. It works faultlessly. So that's the one in the front. We probably need to do another video explaining about lockers. People have asked about that. On the diesel channel, for people diesel, we're trying to keep it more on the mechanical side. Once we start talking about lockers a lot, it's more on the full drive touring side, which is why it's going to be on this channel. So again, I'll remind you, please subscribe. Make sure you're on this channel as well because you could be missing out the information you want or asking questions. Um, yeah, just trying to keep it separate because guess what? Some people just want the touring, some people just want the mechanical, some people want both. So, getting up this hill, yeah, pretty straightforward with the correct tyre pressures, um, fairly grippy tyres, and the right suspension setup, right? So, allowing the suspension, suspension to travel and move. The thing is, if you go fast, you're just bouncing around. You're in the air, your wheels spin, you're losing momentum, and you're gonna make it look hard, right? There's no point making a track that's not that hard look hard. And if you go slower, you can take your time to pick the right line so you don't scratch your car pinstripes, you know, because you're in such a rush and you didn't see that stick poking out because you're a bit, you know, excited. Um, uh, just take your time, you know. Wheel placement, you see a big rock, hey, I wanna dodge that, how do we deal with that? And if we see something like that later in this video, I'll try and help you deal with those as well. But at the moment, we're up to the top of that a uh, little bit steeper section at the top here. There's a couple options where you can go left from memory. I haven't been down there for years. They were, they were dead ends and they can be quite fun. So if you're a local and you're looking for a bit of fun, you can take the alternate side tracks anywhere off these tracks are a bit of fun. But we're going to stick to the main track charcoal, most likely all the way through for this video. If you come up to this intersection, it's about a K from the top of the hill where you've turned right on charcoal. You can take a left but beware, it does go down quite steep and go up quite steep. It's fine, I've been up down there a few times, but preferred with more experience. Don't that make 
Don't make that one of your first tracks, if you know what I mean. Continuing straight. Small bog hole. Certainly not anything you're going to get buried to your axles in, I wouldn't think, but I've made mistakes before. So we're just going to cruise through that. Of course, picking the highest ground possible to stay out of the mud. Another bog hole. So for me, we're just picking which side's got the shallower ground. Now be aware, I've said this before with bog holes. If it's a deep one, you got to be—you can't just drive on the edge of it, and you got—you got to be careful if you're trying to dodge the ruts because you could slip in and land your vehicle on the side. For this one, I believe it's very shallow, and one way to test it, if you're lazy, is to just drive through slowly like that. Now we've got the snorkel head backwards as usual on the tracks, and we've got a K and N filter in. So have a listen to it. It's quite noisy, and then you. When I get into it, you'll hear the turbo spool up. It's pretty cool. It's not like a uh, bop, bop, bop tune patrol, but it's interesting. Have a listen. So that's obviously the, that intake noise at about light sort of 13 to 14, 1500 RPM. And when we give it two to two and a half, it goes quiet and you just hear the turbo spooling up. All right, so it's just the air going through the filter at that certain speed that you can hear. And when you speed it up and it's coming through pretty quick, it does quieten them right down. All right, so I've taken a little side track we're going along charcoal and I took a left turn over the left shoulder it's a sort of you know a little bit more than a left turn this is pretty well dead end it's kind of like coming to a little uh, private campsite which is cool but let's just take a little walk because I found a vehicle hidden in the bush all right so only about that far from the car oh, so there's a bit of a track through here well made a track to get this is obviously when you do an insurance job that's what i'd be tipping they they've gone down some side track gone deep 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 and then gone as far as they could get um finding whatever pathways they could so if anyone needs uh spare parts for an 80 series <laughs> here it is let's have a look yeah it's been here a while yeah, so cobwebs there. What do you need? A left-hand tail light. It's got a what's that? spare wheel carrier there. I don't know, tow bar. I don't think you need much for an 80 series there. So smashed all the window. It's been here a while. What do you need? What parts? You need a diff? I don't know. It's got a lift kit. Have a bit of a look around. Look, it's sort of full of spiders and whatever. Oh yeah, let's get around the driver's side in a minute. Yeah, there you go. And that'll end up going back to Mother Nature. Same place as it came from. It's been sitting here a while. Seats are in pretty good condition. Anyone need some 80 series seats? I mean, you know, they need a clean up, but I'm just looking at them going, they're in good nick. Bit of a coolant stone from someone that put that tank there, but who's asking, is the engine still in it? Am I open the bonnet? I don't think so. It's got a snorkel on it. But anyway, there you go. There's your 80 series. It's got plenty of uh, rubbish. It's been sitting here, what? That's got to be a couple of years at least, hasn't it? It's in pretty good nick considering. Uh, how long it's been sitting here with a window down unless the window was busted more recently but yeah that's it guys all right back to the car we go keep driving so we're just coming out of uh the end of charcoal track it's been fairly uneventful that's why i didn't bother including uh too much footage as i said we took a left turn went exploring down a track over our left shoulder it was a dead end went to a single lock bike track it was like a campsite 
and that's where we found the uh, 80 series spare parts if anyone needs that you can uh, shoot me a text message now see this bog hole here we can probably get through it no problem but the way I look at it is there's a clear track on the left that people have been driving over to avoid it very wise and uh, you know so you got to be careful you don't get sticks in your tire and stuff like that but as I'm saying it's been fairly well used so since we know mud equals money we may as well avoid it now we're getting to the end of uh, this is the end of Chark Hill Charcoal Chark Hill not Char trying to combine the two road names Charcoal Track and Green Hills Road I was going to call it Chark Hill anyway so what we're going to do here is uh, we are going to make a lefty or a righty let me just have a think about this for a minute we're going to make a righty actually we're going to turn right here onto Green Hills Road and then we're going to hang a left onto I think it's Blackwood Ridge Road and look the rest of this trip might even be just touring around we may do some tracks I'll show you the exciting parts if we come across them all right so we headed up Green Hills Road into left into Blackwood Ridge Road and I don't know if it was the first or the second right but there's a an old track that's a new track kind of thing <coughs> excuse me um, yeah it used to be old overgrown whatever but the uh, machine's been through recently and you know filled in some holes and taken out widened up the track a bit cleaned it up if you like so I've been doing a bit of work in the area just thought we'd come and check it out a little bit more low range work it's not too steep it's pretty good but it hasn't got a name on it this one so I couldn't tell you it's only about I don't know it's if you come in Blackwood Ridge Road there's some private property on the left uh, if you get past the private property you've gone too far so it's just back before the end of the private property on the left you turn right just following that through at the moment this is actually quite a cool track there was a little steeper bit there it's not really hard at the moment right so if this if this video gets out soon enough it's toward the end of november now 2020 there's a bit of sand on it. There's see all this new soil. Like, see, the machine's gone through and it's just ripped out a new track, if you like. And it's not new. It is, you know, it's on the map. It's on that maps.me. Um, I don't remember it if I've been on it before many years ago. Like I said, there's so many tracks out here, it's crazy. Um, that's why I thought it'd be good to do a video and give you a bit of a route. But this is going to be a pretty short one today, just a few hours. It'll entertain you for a little while. But that's all you need to get started you need to get started in small you know do a few hours here if, you, if it's not far for you if it's not far from home so we're in low range second start but this bit's a bit steeper so i've just put it back to first now i'm of course talking about a five speed auto because it's the most popular behind the 1kd which is the most popular engine you know i'm not saying which one's better or not of course that's what i think because that's what i own that's why i chose it but the others are good too but for example, if you're in a 1KZ with a 5-speed manual, first low might be just way too slow. So you might be second, you know. So sometimes here, so we're going down at the moment. It's first. I'm not on the brake. I'm ready to apply brakes and keep always keep your vehicle speed under control. Because once it gets out of control, uh, sometimes it can hard to get control back again, right? So this is quite a steep one. Don't come down here if it's wet or been wet. I'd say the dose has been in since the rain because it is uh, powdery and fluffy and I think that uh, maybe there's only one or two other vehicles driven over this since it's been through here and it's a really nice spot I'm uh, you know like I said I don't remember it's really awesome scenery actually um, you wouldn't think you were just in Wombat State Forest just off Green Hills Road so by the looks of it we're gonna go down over a creek or something um, and I'm pretty lucky to have had this freshly graded track with all the all the side bits ripped out. It was obviously it was quite overgrown from memory. Had some holes, you know. It would have got worse since I've been on. I haven't been on it for a while. Like I said, if at all, I may have even missed this one. So we're getting down pretty well to the bottom now. So we're going to see a big bog hole or a creek. We've got actually nothing down here to see. Maybe they've put a pipe in. Uh, maybe just because there's no water but there's no bog hole but there will be okay there will be and <clears throat> straight back up the other side so out of first back into second because remember we're in uh, set first coming down the hill using the low range to keep us the speed down going down the hill right 
a little bit of a narrower track here um, which is cool but it's just I don't know I've got uh, it's just a really cool track I'm just enjoying it um, I think it's gonna pack down a bit more than what it is at the moment at the moment it's kind of a bit fluffy still you know what I mean it needs to be driven on and just hopefully people don't know about it I'm telling you and I'm asking you please so we're cr crossing a walking track now I just want to let you know where it is so we've crossed the creek and we oh no there's a yeah this is a no we went past the whipstick walk but this may be the whipstick walk or something but we're crossing over hang on no we're crossing over yeah it is whipstick loop walk okay so there's a walking track just to let everybody know either side of me you know so if you're into walking it's not a dirt bike track guys so don't bring your dirt bikes onto it um, they are not actually allowed on the walking tracks and there's plenty of other tracks down here for the dirt bikes as well so this one I think is a good one to share just because at the moment it's really good so you know you might even see this what day is it what is it uh, you might even see this in time for the weekend if not the weekend after you can come down here you can do charcoal there was some big bog holes in charcoal over the years I don't know, I must have blinked and missed it, or they've had, again, the bulldozer in there. All the shallower ones are there, you know, so you can have, if you need a bit of a muddy puddle to play in, you can have some fun, but, you know, my my position on that, you know, just mud equals money and avoid it. Um, but the big ones that you could have possibly got stuck in if you, you know, decided to play in the wrong hole, uh, not there, I didn't see them. So I don't know if they just buried the whole area and to the point that I didn't even notice it and I got to the end of the track. So it's all the way through charcoal, just follow the video through. Turn right at Green Hills, then left into, what do we say, Blackwood Ridge Road, and then right into this track that's unnamed. We're just following it through. You could do it in a standard Prado. What I've done so far today, I don't think you'd even scrape, but I'm always saying, I don't want you to get caught out, guys, you know? doesn't take many cars to come through because of the time of the year it is we're not expecting a lot of rain and when it does runs off pretty quick dries up pretty quick the muddy stuff's usually on the flat ground on the hills it runs off but that's the problem if it's been set up right or not whether the water runs off or whether it creates a big washout which is then possibly to be avoided anyway i hope you've enjoyed this part of the track i'm just going to keep cruising along and if it gets a bit better than this or a bit more exciting or anything I'll show you but other than that it's just a cruisy track actually I'm not going a bit further there's a bit of a what's going on up here so I think this part of the track here it may join on with another track so you know have a bit of an eye for it it looks like there's a track going down the hill to the right which they've tried to close off I'm not going to turn that one I'm going to stay to the left yeah so there's an old track that used to come up there and they're not looking at maintaining that one by the looks of it they've pushed a mound of dirt in the way you get over it but there's some you know trees and logs and stuff in it as well um this is clearly the one they've paved the way through so we'll stick to this one and uh yeah let you know if anything more exciting happens and guys where the track comes out literally you got options you can follow along a dirt track but it literally comes out on the highway here, well it's not the highway really, let's see how much traffic there is, right in front of the Blackwood sign, you know, the Murrable Shire Blackwood sign, for those that know, comes out there, so you could, I'll give you a view this way here, right? you could come down, heading towards Blackwood, and come down this bend here, <coughs> excuse me, a bit of a guardrail here situation, right, right, You'd come down the road here and straight off the guardrail, hang a lefty clefty, right? And there's a few different ways in here, right? So hang a lefty and you'd come down in through here. And the track straight ahead is what follows along the side of the road. But if you head direct, directly away from the road, that's the track we just came out of. Okay, so change of plans. We went down the road a few hundred meters and then we saw another track heading away from the road again, again, unnamed. Um, if you followed the one along the road without going onto the blacktop, it would have got you to it. Like I said, only a few hundred meters. So change your plans. You could just come out of that track, keep to the left without going on the blacktop, follow the track down and to the left, and then you'll come down this one. 
again running along the edge or the back of uh, some private properties this time on the right on the perimeter you know kind of like this is their back fence or back gate if you like on our right side and it's been it's again very safe to drive down there at the moment in dry conditions at the time of making this video that is at the moment November late November 2020 uh, the tracks flat okay so it's a little bit hilly here and there but what better to learn on or to help get you out there on the tracks out with the pied karawongs and the kookaburras down here this will be interesting because we're dropping down to a creek as i said there's a number of bike i'm crossing over a single track like a bike track you know uh, it's not it's not labeled so it's probably like a single bike track more than a more than a trail and the track we're heading on comes up towards the whipstick loop walk again so but it'll be interesting let's see what's at the bottom of this probably a pipe through the uh, road i'm guessing you know most likely all right so pipe under the creek whether it's newly done or whatever so at this stage no risk of any bog holes there's another single track going to my left I'm just going to go back a little bit and have a look at that anyway then we'll keep moving let you know okay so as far as i know they're turning this wombat state forest into a national park so probably what will happen a lot of the tracks that are harder will get closed and all the tracks that are open will be easy dirt roads to just get in and out to access walks and stuff like that so they'll be probably end up being no dirt bikes no shooting uh, I'm, you know i'm making a lot of assumptions here i don't know a lot about it but that's what i would think that's in national parks obviously generally the rules um, no pets things like that so get out and enjoy it while you can because you know obviously there's different people that want places for different purposes what i noticed back there was the walking track came out it went over the bridge or the pipe we're sitting on and then just up the hill it went back on so that's the walking track obviously uses the road to cross the water so the walk came from one way and went back up the other side of the creek so the point is get out here and use the place while you can i don't know how much longer we've got to go that's probably why they've been in here doing the work on these roads to make access for walkers because after all uh, that's what people do in national parks they walk you don't drive you drive to the car park right so again another arrow on the left there those those posts with the little green signs you can see walking track walking track and a picture of the no motorbike sign so no motorbikes allowed on that pathway but they're allowed elsewhere at the moment but like i said as far as i know that is going to change so one of the closest places around melbourne that you can get out to and have some fun is going to change names and then probably be restricted back again there's your walking track each side on the left plenty of walking for those that want to work and that's cool here we go we've got a dsc vehicle i might have a chat with a guy and see uh find out a bit more information all right so i just had a chat with the boys and they said um, all this here, yeah, nothing to do with the National Park side of things. That was all meant to happen this year, but COVID put it on hold. And there's pockets, apparently. There's, it's patchy. There's pockets that are going to be turned into the National Park. So I suppose that's not as bad as uh, what it could be. All this preparation is uh, preparation for a big burn. A couple hundred hectares or something next year. So they just want to make sure all the tracks are right. Park it on the back of their truck, eh? Anyway, just made a right turn. Of course, I didn't go on the back of the truck. Going to head back up here, maybe. And I'm going to head to Trentham because he just got. He, he's a. He's from Dalesford, okay. So top bloke. He's from Dalesford. Have a chat with the locals. All right, I got people in uh, Greendale, but the tip is the hot tip. He goes, mate, the pies at Trentham. So bang, you hit the tender section, you turn right, and the bakery is on the left, okay? So it's not the little bakery in the laneway. Uh, it's the one you turn right. It's on the main, same side as the supermarket, right? We're going to get ourselves a curry pie, mate. It's lunchtime. <laughs>
Crank them. Busy place. Lots of cars parked. Very busy for a weekday. So on the intersection here, you turn right. And the bakery will be up on the left. Good luck getting a car park today. Look out on weekends. Alright, so we're just heading back out of Trentham, uh, a few people asking, so was the pie any good? Uh, look, I've had better pies, you know, I'm not that much into pies, obviously they're bad for you, they're all meat and pastry and whatever, so not a good option, we avoid them only on trips type thing, and if there's one that's recommended as good, and I'm hungry, bang, I'm there. Uh, I'll give it a 7 out of 10, they didn't have a curry pie, I would have liked that, um, that was specifically the one that was recommended, which, you know, I like a bit of... Give it a bit of kick, give it a bit of spice. Plain's a bit plain for me. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, not bad. Definitely a little bit different. Not bad. Give it a go. But I'm not. I'm not making like the high, highly rec high recommendation as per our friend was. But it was good. We'll head back down the road towards Blackwood and see if we can find some more tracks. It's about uh, early afternoon now. Haven't got much more time left in the day. See, we're pretty relaxed. We don't get a lot done in a day. It's all just about relaxing and having a bit of fun and a nice pie and a feed or something see ya so cruising back down the road towards Dales for, uh, not Dales for one, duh, uh, take two um, <laughs> cruising down the road back towards Blackwood Blackwood just before Blackwood so north of Blackwood heading down from Trentham coming down a hill uh, you'll see a sign posted road or you can find on your map called Yankee Road, Yankee Road, okay, Yankee Road, we're on Yankee Road, just cruising, it's a pretty nice cruisy road, it's going to be an easy afternoon, I don't think we're going to see any uh, heavy duty action now, so sorry if you thought that was going to happen, uh, we've just been way too relaxed and uh, happy to enjoy the scenery, had a bit of a chit chat with a few people, and the day is just going, so here we go, we've got someone that's out and about. Oh, he's stopped in the middle of the track, he's getting going again. What's he going? We'll, we'll let him go because we're, this is what we do. We don't want to uh, cop his dust. I don't know if he knows what he's doing or where he's going. But anyway, there is a mine down here, right? That's why it's called Yankee Road because it goes to Yankee Mine. And, you know. Yeah, when, when there's a car, hopefully he can... Oh, he stop it again. So we're going to get going again, right? I don't know what he's doing, right? So, hopefully... Yeah, okay, so we're going to get moving, right? Give us the wave, so that's good. Obviously, he uh, probably doesn't know where he's going. So that's what it would be like for you if you came out here without watching all my videos. Maybe you'd be sitting there not really knowing where you're going and trying to look at maps and you know it's much easier to watch this video and follow the directions through the video and I'm not saying this is going to fill up a day but it's going to get you started it's going to give you a head start if you don't know your way around you can't read maps don't start heading out into the forest because you could end up stuck down some track there is some tracks around and I don't know them all that you may not want to go up or down at the wrong at any time, especially the wrong time, weather conditions, whatever, you know, the, the four o'clock track. So you come down here, this road is quite safe. Yankee Road and enjoy the scenery. I'll let you know if I come across anything exciting that you need to know about. Like, here we go, what's this, see? Pronk track. Ooh, you know, we'll have to check that out sometime. Looks pretty easy, so we're going to keep driving. If we come across one that looks a bit chopped up at the start or something, it might even be not too bad further down. But I don't like bog holes, but it's nice to have a bit of a challenge every now and then, if you know what I mean. A bit of a challenge, sort of technical tracks is what we're after. Technical, like 
Well, what's going on here? This looks a bit rough and steep and you've got to think about where you put your wheels. So that's not what you want to do your first few times out. But if you've got plenty of experience, subscribe because we'll have other videos showing you those tracks and giving you those track locations. Now, if you're heading along Yankee Road and you get to here, we're just going to do a pretend turn right. If I remember correctly, see these gate posts, see these white gate posts? Well, there's one, I say posts, there's one, of it. I'm going bush to show you, right? You follow this track down, it's obviously been burnt not that long ago. Down a little way and on the right, you'll find a mine you can have a look at, right? But that's not the way we're going today. We're going to back out and continue along Yankee Road. But, you can go down there, check it out. Go down, I reckon it's half a K or a K. It's not too far down. Turn right, there's a car park, enough for a few cars. Old mine, they've got some cages over them. Watch it if you go for a walk, so you don't fall in. If you've got kids, keep an eye on them, don't let them go, whatever, or you might not see them again. Um, serious. I'm gonna back out and keep continuing along Yankee Road. Today's route that I'm sharing with you, you'll come to this intersection if you follow Yankee Road from there, and you'll come to these orange signs on our left, Old Blackwood Road, Yankee Road comes from behind, I believe that continues that way. And although it doesn't point this way, I believe this is Old Blackwood Road as well, but I can't remember the name of it and it doesn't really matter. And I can't even remember what's down here, but for now we're gonna cruise down here and anything exciting happens, I'll let you know. If I don't report anything exciting, it means, you know, you can just drive down here and enjoy the scenery and have a morning tea and have a lunch stop and go take a leak check out some birds or whatever you're into you can go for a walk you can just take photos anyway okay so still heading down on the main track but i'm gonna hang a lefty here why because mm, i can there's a bit of blue on the tree with an arrow you can't see it it's not an arrow it's just a bit of blue and it's a left turn so this is where i'm going today i can't really give you any good marks on the position because you know let me have a look, give you some, uh, see if there's a name on this one, alright. So we were coming down Old Blackwood Road as suspected. This one, we might not even continue through on it, but at the moment, we're going to go and have a look-see. Because these back tracks and whatever, they're the ones, look, see the blue on the tree here? So that is the blue mark, similar on the tree down at the corner. So if you see the blue on the tree that looks like that that is telling you don't go down here or it'll end in sudden death and it might we're just checking it out here oh looks very steep looks like fun i'll tell you what this could be one way big time you know um have i been down here oh, i don't know commitment track mm, let me have a think about it all right all right all right I'm glad I stopped to have a walk here. I have found a cracker track. Now, this basically, we're parked, we're way up there, right up the track. That is steep where I stopped. It was starting to get steep. Now, when I say steep, if you look where the, what's in the picture now, looking at that, that's kind of like to the limit of what you want to drive on. And then as I was walking down that, I went, it seems to get even steeper from about here where I'm standing. Now, you can see... There's a lot of debris and stuff that are washed down. This track doesn't get driven on much at all. There's a whole heap of debris here actually, but uh, this is a track and a half. And I can tell you, I don't remember ever being up or down here. And I'm very glad I stopped when I did. That's where a bit of experience pays to stop and do that bit of reconnaissance on foot. Or, you know, you can come back another time on your dirt box if you like. I wouldn't even take a dirt bike up and down there. That'd kill me. And I'd like to see someone else doing it, actually. Um, so, if, if you're stuck around this long, thank you. And, um, I suppose the positive there is, maybe you learnt something. Sometimes just get out and have a look before you go too far. Um, because we certainly, look, I'm not saying that we can't drive down there. But... I'm just struggling to stand on this track at the moment. I'm taking baby steps. There is bugger all traction. I can hardly stand on it, okay? It is very steep, guys. Really steep. And uh, I don't know what you can see of the condition of that track down there, but 
there's not much of a track down there. It's very deep ruts. And this is an absolute cracker. So anybody that sees this video, please put in the comments, yeah, I want to uh, come out when you do your extreme full drive day because that's what it's going to be, guys. Like, it is going to be ridiculous. So I'm not going to take my vehicle up and down this track, but there's people that have got... Tell me, why have you got the 4-inch lift? Why have you got the 35s or 33s? Why have you got the winch? This is the stuff you want to do. These are the tracks you're hunting for. Well, I've just found another one. Bloody fantastic. Now, if even better, if we can get to the top and bottom of this, we're going to be here all day getting vehicles up and down here. Now, I don't think it's dangerous. It goes straight down the hill fairly like this. Well, that being said, it could be. There's quite a few rock steps even just here, you know. Uh, of course, in the video, it doesn't look as steep and it doesn't look as rough. I'm telling you right now, you're on a really steep, you're going to be compressed at the front, your bash plate's going to be dragging its head off, make sure you've got the K-on gear. Your back wheels are going to be up in the air at one side, like on this high rock part here, and then drop down into holes at the other side. So the, the back's going to be popping around a bit, you're going to want to stay in the ruts and do it real slow, only for experienced drivers, but we're going to have a hardcore day, we're going to come here. You anyway, know, for now, I'm telling you, looking at this picture, you can think whatever, look, that's the camera level. But I look at that hill and I go, I know it's not, but I go, that's 45 degrees. But I know when it looks 45 degrees, it's about 35, 38. That really is steep, guys. That's the kind of hill you don't want to walk up, ride up, or drive your car up. And it's exactly the same right here as what we're looking at there. It goes down very steep, I'll call it, into a ravine. It's really green and lush down there. I don't know how much you can see. Looks like a really nice area. And, um, of course, then... It may go back up the other side, up to the top of the other ridge. I don't know. But this is hardcore. I'm backing out of it from where I am up there. And bada bing, we're going a different way today. I'm halfway back to the car and you can't sort of see over the crest. It's like, oh, you know, it's just like, wow, that is really steep down there. And this is one of those ones where you're going uh, to push the door because uh, the hill's so steep. Man, oh, ah, oh, give me a break. That is steep, guys. We we're down there. Now I've got to, uh, I drove to my limit of what I want to reverse up. Could probably gone a bit further, but I'm glad I didn't. Back up the top of the hill, turn around, show you another way for today. Yeah, remember, anyone that watches this, if you want to come here on your own at your own risk, expect vehicle damage as a possibility. Those blue signs that I was joking around when I said means near sudden death, it's for real. So if you find them, take care. Alright, bit of fun walking up the hill and reversing up. There's another bit of information for you that was really important to stick around. Know how to reverse your vehicle, know how to use your mirrors. I don't care if you're using your head, your mirrors, your reverse camera, or any combination of above. Know how to reverse your vehicle confidently. There's a number of times we're going to go down tracks, there's going to be a tree down, or whatever's going to happen, oncoming cars, whatever. You need to know how to reverse. If you can't reverse, you're in trouble. So we're back to, uh, what was it called again? Um, old Blackwood Road or something, wasn't it, from memory? Let's check it out. Yep, Old Blackwood Road, we're turning left again. So, it's a butter boom butter bing So if you come up Old Blackwood and you see that blue stuff, oh, you're in trouble, okay? I reckon you're in trouble. Um, on another trip, not today, we'll try and find the other end to it and see what that looks like. Whatever's shortest, we might even do a walk into it. In preparation for a hardcore extreme I want to prove how tough my Prado is day. You know, I know there's a lot of people that don't want to do it, but hey, it'll be fun to come and watch. You can park at the top of the track. It's good exercise to go for a, uh, you know, go for a walk up and down the hill. Just make sure you've got your good grippy shoes on. Lucky I had my whatever they are on, and they are, they've got excellent traction, and I was a struggling. Just the steepness, right? It's very steep, guys, very steep. It's also very rough. Uh, lucky the conditions are good. If it was more into summer, it would be powdery and slipperier. 
it's dry enough that it's you know all the dust has been washed off and the ground's been packed down but it's not wet and slippery we've got a bit of sun anyway let's keep exploring down here i'll let you know the next excitement funny enough guys old blackwood road of course comes out down at uh blackwood the whole track's fairly uneventful, it just depends on the condition it's in. Obviously, the condition varies, as I said, late November, it's pretty dry. There's a few wet holes around, but I've seen it in worse condition, it's in pretty good condition at the moment. Okay, down the bottom of this track is what we call the car wash, uh, depending if there's any logs in the river and how much water's in there. Sometimes you can take a run through there and uh, give everything a bit of a clean up without doing too much destruction, gently. And if you're too silly and go on the wrong part, you might lose your car in the river. I love saying ravine. Down there in the ravine. Anyway, uh, it's been an awesome day. Nothing too hard as far as tracks goes. Um, I'll have to promise you definitely 100% hardcore tracks in another video. I just can't guarantee which one, so I'm gonna remind you yet again. Subscribe, turn the bell on, and then you can see how we roll and prepare yourself for a trip. I hope you watch to the end to get yourself educated. Please reply and let me know. Did you watch till the end? And did you learn anything? I'll be looking at the comments, guys. Thanks for watching. I think that's it, I think that's it. See ya.